This video is a banger. We're looking at TradingView's long and short position tools to let you lock in more profit, cut your losers short, and overall be a better trader when you have your defined entry and exit positions. Here's how we get it done. On this chart showing Google right now candlesticks on a daily pattern, we want to go over to the left-hand side and let this little Jimmy open up. Long and short position, we're gonna go long first. We wanna have a bullish play on this stock. You click that, you click anywhere on the chart, it's gonna pop in a little tool there. This is the long position tool. Now, if we're bullish in this trade, we know that we want the stock price to go like this and keep going higher to make some money. If it goes like this and we're bullish, we're gonna end up losing. We're gonna talk about this in a second, but we understand that concept first before we do anything else. Assuming that we do, we can click in here to our long position tool and we're gonna put this middle line right here this is very important. This middle line has to go right where you want to buy shares. So in this case, this Google chart's going up and down, up and down, up and down. Maybe there's some area of support down here. Okay. Let's say we want to put it at the top of this candle where it's at currently and just say right there, we're good to buy shares right there. If you want to put it there, if you want to hit the bottom of the wick, you can move it around whatever you want to do. You can actually click and drag this up as well. If you want to click and drag the handle, you can move it out. You can move it up. Okay. You can move it all around, but put it where you want to buy shares at and we'll calculate the rest based off of this point. So let's say at Google, 106.22 is the buy position. You're gonna be in the trade at 106.22. If you're cool with that, then we need to work on step number two, which is looking at our stop loss to protect our downside. That's this red box down here. We wanna protect any kind of losing positions in our trade so we don't just have unlimited risk going into it. So the longer that this box is, the more loss you're okay with taking. So if you wanna tighten that up, you can click and drag it up there. You can also double click inside the long position tool and open it up and it'll give you this long position area, this box, and you can adjust the stop loss and the profit taking as well based on the stop level down here through ticks, which is just, yeah, think of it as one cent. You can see that this, if it goes to 150, it's gonna really tighten up right here. If you push this back out to 500, it's going to elongate considerably. And you can also change the price here as well. Same kind of thing. You can do it by ticks or by price. Just think of ticks as dollars and cents away from your uh, initial entry price. Think of price as the actual price of the stock in here. So if you want to hit a certain price level, or if you want to look at your chart and say, hey, maybe you want to click and drag this up to the bottom of these wicks. Is you're okay with your stop loss being stopped out there, which is roughly, right? It's just under $2 below that Google uh, buy price. So we're going to look at this at 150, so let's call it an even 150 for our ticks. And we're gonna go 104.71 as our stop out. Next, we wanna click an area where we may think the stock may go to. We wanna have a top end for profit taking or a profit target area. Now, based on some quick technical analysis here, you have an area here where it topped out. You've got an area here where it topped out and here as well. So maybe we're gonna look at saying, okay, we'll let this guy run up until this area right here. And we're gonna go right to the top of this candlestick right over here and say, that's gonna be our profit area right there. If this is the case, then, if you're happy with these, if this is what you want to set up for your trade, you're okay with the risk reward. You want to double check things by going into here and looking at it and saying, okay, your risk reward ratio, you can see it right there. It's 2.18. This is a critical point. If you're taking trades that are below two, you're not giving yourself enough potential profit for the risk you were taking. If you're taking a trade like this, where your profit is like a one-to-one, -one, like it's saying your risk reward is like, if you're going up, you're going to make the same amount. If it goes up $1.50, and you're gonna lose the same amount of $1.50 per share if it goes down. You wanna have trades that are going to be twice as much potential profit as there are to loss. So that when you do take a loss and you take a couple losses, you can then bounce back through a couple winners and you're not having to win every single trade to go ahead and be successful because you're leaving more room for profits to run here in this trade, hitting a 2.17 here for this potential setup. Other thing we need to think about is risk management from our profit and loss perspective. If we're in here, we're gonna set our account size to whatever your account is, you can do so. It's going to spit out if your account's $10,000, let's say, and you can change that up here. You're going to then put in and say, okay, you can buy 133 shares of this stock at this given price, if you go down to this 150 stop or 104.71, you're gonna lose roughly 2% of your account here. If you change this to 10%, it's going to increase the amount of shares that you want to buy to be able to do this. But for our purposes here, it's, it's easier to think about it just in terms of like 100 shares. That's what it kind of defaults to as well. But you can change these risk parameters around to give you a better idea of how many shares you wanna buy. If you keep it simple with 100, you can see that if you go from here at 106.22 up to 109.46, you're gonna make $325 if you buy 100 shares. If you were to buy 100 shares and it goes down to 104.71, you're going to lose $150. That's what it's set to as the default mode is 100 shares per uh, entry. You can also then, if you want to keep this on, you can. If you want to take it off, though, you can add in little horizontal rays here at the top and bottom end. 
And you can do this very simply with a couple of clicks at the bottom, at the middle, at the top, at the middle, and then at the bottom here as well. You can add these price targets. You can add notes as well. If you want to put in right here that I have some text, this is my stop out. You can do that. So those are easy ways to augment the trade. And if you want to turn this long and short position off, you can do so. Once you have it set in there, you can take this off and then you can just have these targets and you understand where the trade is going to go. If you let the target kind of, if you let the trade play out and we go ahead in time, we're going to just speed this up a little bit. We're going to go in, boom, boom, boom. And of course I picked an example that made it look good and have some profit here at the top end for Google. Later in this video, I'm going to show you an example of how I use this tool in real time with a real trade today and showing you the outcome of that trade. But before we do that, let's hop over to Tesla and show you how to do this and use the short tool position for when you're bearish or expect the market to go down. So looking at this Tesla chart, what we're going to do is go ahead and say that this price has dropped and gapped down right here. And we think that the strong red candle that's engulfing candle, it means it's going to drop lower. So we want to get in profit if the stock continues to drop into this area down here. So we're going to hop into our same area over here on the chart. If you have it on your favorites bar, just use it off the favorites bar. Short position, click on drag, put it on there. And we want to take this and put this where we want to buy the shares. Let's say we wanted to buy the shares where it's currently at or just below. We want to say if it's going to pull back, if it pulls back to, let's say, 169.50, it's a couple bucks higher than what it's currently trading at today. So if it comes back a bit, we want to get in because we still think that it could happen. But we think this is generally an area where it's going to bounce off of. We think it's going to bounce again off of this kind of previous area right there where it kind of dropped through, where it's going to bounce off this and then go back down further this way. So that's what we're looking at right there. So we click in here, we're going to open this up and widen it out. And what's going to happen is we're going to tighten up our stop loss. We're going to put that at an area of potential support on the upside. So it's a, it's a, it's a price we don't think Tesla is going to go above. And I'm just going to look at here and say, okay, there's some candlestick action right around here. Let's call it 178 and change, right? We're kind of where it's at. We're going to just take it to the bottom of this candle right there. And we're going to leave it right there. And for potential profit, yeah, we want to take this and go down to where it was at before and think, let's say it's going to hit this candle. It's like maybe tighten it up right to about there where it was at before. And that's our potential profit area. Now you can see here, right? If we have Tesla and it goes up, we're going to make, we're going to lose 941 potentially with this stop where it is. We're going to make 1572 of this plays out the way we hope it will based on our technical analysis and our general market sense. If this is a risk to reward ratio at 1.67 that you're okay with, you can take the trade. But obviously we said we want to have this somewhere in the area of two. Now, what you don't want to do is just say, oh, well, it's definitely going to go below this and just do that and kind of tighten this up to the level where it doesn't make any sense. We're just playing with it to make this number look good. That's not what we're after here. We want to pick good areas of support and resistance on the chart technically. And this number is going to be whatever it is. If that, if that number doesn't shape up and it's not something you want to do or get involved with, you just don't make the trade. Simple as that. If this isn't looking what, the way you want it to. Just don't make the trade. Live to fight another day. But let's assume that we want to make this trade and we're okay with it because we have a good feeling. We have some good data backing this up and we're in it for this trade. Again, if we're buying 100 or we're going to short 100 shares of Tesla. And if the stock price continues to pull back a little bit and go up higher, we're going to get in, we're going to activate it, then we're going to go back down, hopefully, and make some money and cover the short at this area dark target down here at 154, 153 and change. Let's see how this one played out on the chart and see what the next kind of days brought. So next day it goes lower, which is good. We actually would have been activated right there if I zoom in there, right? The next day it went, it would have actually, this wick right here means the price went up to this area. We would have been filled right there at that 169.48. So we would have been in the trade there. And as the stock price continued to kind of move lower, we would have been in the money. We would have been making money. If we would have closed, we would have made some cash, but we're not looking to close there. We're looking to let this thing run. And this is how you can kind of use this to your advantage is that if you let this go and just let it sit there, knowing you have a profit kind of locked in up here and you have a stop loss that you're okay with up there, you can just let the trade work. And this is an easy way to kind of let your winners run, as they say, because everybody's first instinct is when they have some money in their cash account and say, oh, close it off, close it off, close it off. I want to take that money and go and get it in my account, which is the wrong mindset. That is the mindset we should be having for the downside. When it's going your way, you have to let it run, let it kind of sit there and stew and just let it see where it goes. In this example, next day, let's see. Okay, boom, we have this going the opposite way. If this was the next day and you kind of looked at it at the end of the day, maybe you close it off yourself or you let it kind of go out to your stop loss if you're okay with that. It's now we're going to be losing this trade as it's shown right there. Next day, boom, okay. It's approaching our stop loss again. Next day, boom, it breaks through. We would have been stopped out here. So this would have been a losing trade and we would have been stopped out at that $964 amount with a potential, again, profit of 15 and change. The max profit we would have gotten on this if we were to close it was about 500 bucks. 
So the risk to reward ratio on this one ended up not being great. If you keep looking at Tesla's price in the coming days, it kept on moving, kept on moving, and just kept on moving higher. So a good kind of trade to just see where it could go wrong. But if you're stopping out here, you're limiting your damage to 19,964. If you're okay with that, that's cool. Instead of limiting it and keeping open-ended to potentially losing more and saying, okay, now I'm down double that or triple that. That's what happens when you let, when you let losers run, hoping that they're going to come back. You don't do that. You cut them off. You have your stop loss. You just let it go and do its thing automatically. You take the motion out of it and you're good to go. So that is the shorting tool to be able to do this and set this up. Not every trade is going to be a winner. And I'm going to show you an example right now of a trade I made today and how it played out. So right now we're showing the daily chart for FTI here in the top left. And I'm going to switch this to a five minute chart in a second. But what I looked at and what I wanted to do here was look at this kind of area of a gapping up on the previous day, this was last Friday. So I thought the gap up plus some stochastics I was looking at plus general market sentiment about the kind of uh, debt ceiling in the US going up and maybe potentially being solved all was a kind of a catalyst for this stock to continue to kind of push forward and push a little bit higher. So I've got some notes over there, right? Hold for a possible pump crossover above the eight day moving average, which I had on this chart as well. It was shown right there and it crossed over and closed above it. So a couple of things technically looking really good for me. So I was in there at 1388. I had my stop there and I had my profit. So this is how it looked and how it set up using that tool. This is gonna be a long trade for me. So I'm gonna get in here and say, hey, I'm okay buying right here, right? And you can see these areas that I've previously drawn with trend lines there. So 1388, I'm in the game right there. My stop loss I set at this red line up here. My profit target was way up here at 1442. This is the five minute chart for FTI. And you can see a really strong candle to close out on Friday, which is a good omen for the coming Monday. You can see my stop loss down here, my profit target up here. Let's see what happened when Monday turned on and came around. Good opening start. And when this happened, I decided to move my stop loss up and actually lock in some potential profit. I didn't want this to go against me. I didn't want to lose any money in the trade. So I moved up to about $14, 14 and change. And I decided that I was okay with risking a little bit of kind of early stopping out. For potential locking in of this, like it was about hundred bucks, hundred uh, $120. So I said to myself, that's okay. And you can do this as a trader. If you want to up your stop loss and make sure you're going to stay and make it a profitable trade, you can do this. It's kind of like a trailing stop loss would operate as well. But I did this and actually made a mistake because it went a little bit longer. And had I not moved this up, it came back and touched it right there. It, it just didn't show it. It's not exact right there, but I did, I did get stopped out right around that a 9.45 marks at the 14 and then change, 14.05 actually, I stopped out. So I made some profit. I made about 120 bucks in this trade. But as you can see, it kind of meandered around, meandered around up and down. And then it decided to go higher and move higher, closer to my profit area at the top. So had I waited and it didn't actually get there itself, but I could have locked in a potential larger gain here. I left a couple hundred bucks on the table because I moved the stop loss up. So again, it's about having confidence in your setups, confidence in your trade. This one worked for me and I made money, but I still kind of felt like, ah, oh, I should have made more money as a trader, which is always the hard part. You always see the negative side of how to do things as a trader. But you can see here, this is still a good trade, a winning trade. And the setup worked this time for my trading strategy. The long and short of this is, is that you can move these around. You can use them to your advantage. You can use them to trade with. You can see the profit. You can see the risk reward ratio. And you can give yourself a better idea if it's a good trade, a bad trade, a trade you want to stay away from, or the ultimate setup where you're going to make a lot, a lot of money. If you want to know my strategy for how to find these kind of pump areas before they actually happen on the chart, check out this next video here. Subscribe to the channel for more videos, and I will catch you on the next one.